Hey, it's Natasha, and today I'm going to show you our landforms and mapping resources. So if you watched my video on my second grade social studies curriculum choices, you will know that I chose the Lakeshore Learning Social Studies resource boxes, and I picked two of them for the year, landforms and mapping, and the United States resource box. So this video is going to show you all of the resources that I'm going to be using with that landforms and mapping resource box. It's mainly books because that comes with everything you need. However, I happened to find this bingo game at Goodwill. So it's the Lakeshore Learning Landforms and Mapping Bingo. My girls and I have already played this. We really enjoy it. So I think it will be great to go along with that. So the rest of everything I have is books to go along. I also have a schedule that I have made up that I will post in the description box showing uh, which book I'm going to be reading with which activity, just in case you happen to be using that Lakeshore Learning Landforms and Mapping box as well, then um, you'll have a schedule made up for you if you decide to use any of these books. But these books could go with any Landforms and Mapping um, unit study that you wanted to do. So the first thing I have is this draw right now, and this is book six, Animals and Habitats on Land, Ponds and Rivers and Oceans. And I thought this one was really good because it does talk about different things um, that we'll be learning about. So we'll be learning about oceans and we'll be learning about mountains. And so in this book, it has drawing instruction and then something to copy down. And then I also have um, this Draw Right Now book that I picked up at a used curriculum sale, but it was unused. And it has the paper here to draw the picture and then copy the passage. So I thought this would just be something nice to go along with it. And then I have Geography from A to Z, a picture glossary. And this book is just like it says, it has pictures and it has the definitions of all the terms. So that's super nice. Now this one I actually do not have scheduled because the Landforms and Mapping Resource Box does have picture cards with a lot of these things, but this I'll probably just keep on my shelf and if we wanna to refer to it, we can. Now this book is pretty cool. I'm actually pretty excited about this one. This is Maps and Mapping Discover Science. This is a King Fisher book. And you can see there's more titles in this series and it makes me want to get all of them because this is super cool. And so I'll show you the contents here. And I've broken this book up into different sections and we're actually not reading this entire book, although we're reading a good portion of it. But for example, when we're learning about scale in our Lakeshore books, we'll read this section on understanding scale. And it just goes over different things making maps, drawing maps, using symbols. And then I wanted to show you this. In the back, it does have additional activities. Now, I'm not planning on doing any of these additional activities unless we just happen to have extra time and want to because that Lakeshore box does come with um, a tons of activities. And so we don't really need these, but I thought this would be super helpful um, for somebody doing a landforms and mapping unit study. So I wanted to show you this, but it's got those couple activities and then it has a glossary also. And then it has parent and teacher notes with additional extension activities. So you could base an entire unit study um, along with this book. And then it has some, did you know, some facts there. And then it has a maps and mapping quiz at the end too. So if you wanted to quiz your kids, you could. And then it gives you additional resources. So. If there is one book that I would say, and then an index, that you would want to get for a landforms and, and mapping unit study, it would be this one. So again, this is by King Fisher. All right, then I have this King Fisher books, uh, book, River and Oceans, Geography, Facts and Experiments. So this one also has a lot of different facts about rivers and oceans and it also has activities. So you'll see, do it yourself like right here for oceans and seas. Here's another do it yourself. So this one is super cool too. These Kingfisher books, um, I'm super impressed with. Then we have maps and globes. This one we will be reading the whole thing, but not at one time. I did break this up to go along with what we're learning. And it talks about how kind of maps started and goes into um, Columbus and Magellan. And then it goes into talking about globes and maps and hemispheres and all kinds of things. 
So how high are the mountains? How deep are the oceans? Physical and political maps. So this also is a really good resource. All right, then I have McElligot's Pool by Dr. Seuss. And I liked this one because it covers um, the ocean, obviously, but it talks about different places that they're going. And so I thought this would just be a fun read aloud or my daughter could read it herself. Um, we've actually already read this book, um, but for example, it's talking about Tibet here and uh, it talks about the world's deepest ocean and that sort of thing. So this is just kind of fun when we're going over oceans. And then on that same kind of theme, we've got these two Dr. Seuss books here, Wish for a Fish, Sea Creatures, and Clam I Am, all about the beach. Now these aren't really landforms and mapping related, but it would be kind of like a science tie-in, although landforms and mapping seems like a lot of science to me. But these would just be fun books that I had on my shelf uh, that could uh, go along. And um, these are the, um, the learning library, the Cat in the Hats learning library. We tend to uh, really like these. Um, this one is torn. But anyway, um, so it talks about the water and the ocean and, you know, how that all works. So it's pretty cool. And then this one, all about sea creatures, it just talks about the different sea creatures. So... And it also talks about the layers of the ocean, like the abyss and the dark zone, twilight zone, all that. So those are just kind of extras to go along with it. And same thing with this one, 1001 Things to Spot in the Sea. I just happened to have all these books on my shelf, and so I pulled out the ones that went. Uh, so that's why we tend to have a lot of books about the sea. But um, I thought this one would be fun um, also for my three-year-old to use. Um, to keep her engaged while we're learning. I can hand her this book and, you know, she can try to find all these things. Of course, my second grader will probably like this too. This is an Usborne book. And then we have this Island Boy. So we will be learning about islands. And so I actually have two books about um, islands. And um, these are both, a couple of these books those Cat in the Hat Learning Library books and McElligot's Pool and these two books and two more I'm going to show you are all Memoria Press um, enrichment books too. And so that's why I happen to have them on my shelf. But anyway, Island Boy. So this book is a longer book. It's a picture book, but it has a lot of text on each page. But I thought that would be a good read aloud for really all my younger girls. And then Surrounded by Sea, Life on a New England Fishing Island. And so I thought that would be interesting too. This is another one that has um, kind of a lot of text on the page. So I would use this um, as a read aloud also. And then we have Follow the Water from Brook to Ocean. This is a Let's Read and Find Out Science books. We really like these two. And just talks about how the water goes all the way to the ocean. And then this book is super cool, Water Dance by Thomas Locker. And it talks about different things. It has little, like these little poems and I am the rain. I am the mountain stream, I am the waterfall, I am the lake, river, sea, and so forth. Mist, clouds, storm front, thunderhead, and on and on. Rainbow. And then the last is I am one thing, I am many things, I am water, this is my dance through our world. But the pictures are very beautiful. And then it has this information on the water cycle here. And there we have it. So those are all the books. Like I said, a lot of them happen to be ocean themed just because that's what I had. But I do really recommend these two books to start you off with a landforms and mapping study. These are my top picks. So anyway, I hope that was helpful and I will talk with you soon.